Good afternoon. Today is Sunday, August 2nd, 2020, uh, and it's about uh, 3.30 p.m. here in Pasadena, California. Uh, my name is Chris Ravelli, and I'm the co-founder of All Sports Market, and here's the update for the last week. So the MLB is postponing games all over the schedule. Um, we're maintaining this day by day, and that's how we're going to handle it because uh, the data providing situation is not stable. So we're just going to do this manually and keep an eye on everything. Uh, I think you're going to see more trouble in the baseball season. And I think the bubble idea, of course, has a much uh, better chance of success. But all it takes is just one person to bust the whole thing to pieces. So I'm going to be very surprised uh, if, it, if any of this stays together for an entire season. And that, that, that thought is, is hardly my own. You, there are plenty of people in, in the sports business and otherwise saying the same thing. Uh, and yes, I've got a few comments about being agitated, uh, physically angry uh, on videos about certain matters. And yeah, I, I am. I am. It's real. Okay. So the matter with the SEC and Leon and the rest of the lying bullshit going on on Reddit and other places. Uh, yeah, it's, it's wrong. Okay. It's wrong. And if you don't want me to be upset about it, then I'm, I mean, I'm doing that because I'm, I'm custodian of your interest in this, in, in this business. So my anger is, is about protecting what we've built. It's really not about me at all. It's about potential damage to, to the, uh, the project we've been working on here for more than 15 years. I mean, hard 15 years. So would you rather that I don't care, don't fight for this and just let it be? I mean, that's the other option. Maybe some people don't show these kinds of things in public, but I don't play games. This is real. This is who I am. This is how I feel. And I don't care who sees it. I'm not going to put one face on for the courts and one face on that's the PR. Look, that stuff is all disappearing because of COVID-19 and the change of things. You got people doing their TV shows from their basements and stuff. Everybody knows that's a bunch of fake bullshit and putting on those silly smiles and all that. It's like in lawsuits when you're pretending like you like each other in a courtroom and you'd rather grab each other by the throat. I'm not going to fake this, okay? This is bullshit. The SEC thing is bullshit. The Leon thing is bullshit. And the people that are out there trying to mess things up for us when it really counts is bullshit. So I'm going to get mad about it and I'm going to take action based upon that. And if, if that bothers you, something's wrong because, again, I'm just protecting the interest that you have in this market and in this business. I have no claims on it, okay? I have no personal claims on it. I'm just the custodian of it. So if that's not important to you, okay, fine. But I, I would think, through, think that through a little bit. Um, another comment. So anytime I get agitated or uh, whatever about the gambling stuff and make some snarky remark or something, that is directed towards the industry and the operators. It is not directed towards the victims or anybody else that may have gotten caught in the trap or have been somehow harmed by it or even just peripheral damage, okay? It, my problem is with the concept. I have deep understanding of how that business works because I helped in the late 90s. That's how ASM came to be. So that is my uh, emotional position. It's not aimed at any person or to any misfortune that they may have had I mean, I give people, to, I give cash to people on the street that I don't know because they're hungry. So why would I take glee in 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 somebody uh, befalling a tragedy? I am upset with the operators who are willingly, knowingly addicting and robbing people, and that's the reason ASM was built in the first place. So if you have an issue with that, then you need to exit stage right because that's who we are. We are an anti-gambling outfit. Okay. $6 billion wire card gambling crypto scam. That is just turning into a bigger mess every time I read about it. Apparently, there were billions of dollars that didn't even exist. And this is all supposedly being done by the regulators and the, the accountants and all that. And there's literally, how does billions of dollars not exist if you've got audited statements? I, that's how sick the system is. That's how pervasive the dishonesty is in the system. Extreme capitalism. That's what America is. And is this really what we want? Every couple of years, the economy implodes and wipes everybody out except for the people at the top. I don't think that's, I don't think if you poll people on the street that they enjoy this whipsaw uh, up and down. I mean, it's, it's like 
the worst roller coaster in the world. Okay, sure, it might be fun on the way up, and then on the way down, you lose your arms and legs and end up at the bottom of a ravine. I mean, is that is that the kind of cap capitalism that we want? Because if we don't change anything, that's all we're going to keep getting. In the case of the bankruptcies, you need to see this, the personal ones that I've had to endure, that's all money that would have been owed by the company, okay? It would have been owed to me or just to, it would have been owed to me because as it's recorded, I basically loaned it out through my personal credit. So at this point in time, that's about $100,000 that ASM will never have to repay me or anybody else, okay? With zero negative impact on the business itself. So that's, that's a beneficial, my taking that on my name and enduring it is a $100,000 minimum credit to the ASM balance sheet. McDonald's closing stores, this is not something that you see. I do not remember this uh, ever happening. Uh, not, not hundreds of stores, and that's the storyline. Uh, Hollywood uh, people, relatively stable Hollywood people, not people that got an Instagram hit or a uh, YouTube hit or some kind of flash in the pan thing that go off and buy a mansion and then they get thrown out or they rent it actually is what they do. And then they get thrown out because they never make the second rent payment. That's not what's happening. You're starting to see more established people here that are putting their houses up for sale. So that is a leading indicator of where the economy is going, which is down. Okay, down. Um, bonus margin, and I'm still working on this. This is all part of the same storyline because the Sports Vote Manifesto is to give the headline narrative for the case for sports markets uh, being a solution for a lot of things, basically economic problems, education problems. That, uh, that, that is the core foundational document uh, that's what uh, uh, it's about. And in there, there's going to be um, a treatment of, of the math, okay? The mathematical proof that what I'm saying will, will happen because math is math, okay? Uh, you, can, you can argue about uh, opinions on things. Opinions on math, doesn't, that, that's a non that doesn't make any sense, okay? So I'm going to put forward a math problem that shows that what I've been claiming will actually happen. But it needs to be very, very simple because what I have learned and what I've studied and read and I believe to be true is that uh, complexity is, a, is not going to work. It, it can't be some uh, math problem that I have to explain on a whiteboard that takes, you know, uh, six feet and, and 15 minutes. So that's really what it's about. But, but that is the message uh, that is in that book about the math and that that is I'm still working on that to simplify the math problem so that I can explain it to anybody and then the bonus margin also um, uh, you know I've said this before in the in the current uh, the pilot market it acts as a, a stimulus and it's not, it's working you can see that uh, because the track the well we've had start sports has restarted which of course is a big part of it but also you're seeing contracts that are trading in excess of a hundred thousand a day is about normal now for about two weeks. So um, yeah, so anyway, uh, bonus margin is a stimulus. Um, ASM is a, a stimulus that slash infrastructure plan for the world economy, okay, at the end of the day. But right now we just need to prove it here. Uh, you prove it here and it'll be caught, it'll be replicated everywhere. Well, it won't be replicated, it will be spread everywhere. Uh, so we just need to make sure we show how it works demonstrate that we can raise money and, and all of that, which we've never done, that, that's got to happen. We have to show it one time and then it will spread out, uh, it'll spread out from there. So the, uh, the wealth gap is still skyrocketing at, any, at a much faster rate now because of COVID-19. Uh, this is another thing that we talk about addressing with, um, with ASM is the wealth gap, of course. Build back better. That's uh, Biden's headline message or one of the main headline messages. Um, I couldn't agree more and I agree 100% with that. And I think that's a fantastic uh, alliteration and, and uh, package of words that really sums up the concept of, well, of where he's at with his political message and also where we're at with what we're saying about the American economy and uh, uh, sports investing instead of sports uh, bets. 
Nevada Sportsbooks post the first loss since uh, this past June. So this is just uh, the June numbers since 2013. Okay. Now, don't make light of this. This is not all just shutdown related. This is significant. Okay. First time in seven years, there's been a, a, a loss. Okay. And you're going to see more numbers. The Q2 numbers are not out yet for DraftKings and the rest. I'm sure they're, they'd like to sit on that as long as they can. But now they're a public company. They're going to have to turn them over. So uh, we'll see. I don't know what their announcement date is, but they're already 30 days past June, the end of the quarter. So it should be pretty soon. It's not going to be good. And they'll have all kinds of stories about why that's okay, but it's, it's not going to be okay. Uh, do not copy ASM, okay? Do not copy any aspect of this platform. We have invested literally millions of dollars in it, including patent protection, trademark protection, trade secrets, trade dress, copyrights, trademarks, all of that stuff. It's documented back to the very beginning. So even in the failure of a patent or a trademark dispute, I can easily show origin. It's 20, it's got to be more than 20 gigabytes of data at this point, probably closer to 30, where I can substantiate that we are the origins of this concept, that the platform is ours, and whether or not you find some clever patent angle or something, common law says you cannot do this. In a common law courtroom, which is what we have in the United States, common law, you're going to lose because I can show a jury who created it, and you're not going to be able to show anything else. And some of you idiots are out there actually saying out loud that you're looking at us to copy. That's pretty fucking stupid. So go ahead. Give it a shot. You will be sued, and you will be shut down. Okay? Simple as that. Herman Cain. This is a very interesting story because I was in Las Vegas last year at Freedom Fest, which is the Libertarian Super Bowl. Uh, I actually went there because I wanted to hear the most extreme views from the other side, okay? And that's where you go, okay? I listened to all those speakers, including Herman Cain, and I met him at a book table, um, not his book table, just a big book table in the center of the exhibition space. And just a quick hello, you know, he is an, was an enormously big giant guy. Of course, just about everybody's a big giant guy to me, but really a big giant guy and you know well spoken you know projects a lot of energy very enthusiastic a lot of you know very high power kind of guy dead okay it's a little shocking okay remember i said somebody's going to know somebody who died of covid-19 this would be my first person okay i i i i wasn't a friend i just said hello that's all but it's enough okay i was there standing there a few minutes you know, to kind of be, you know, I, I know this person is, you know, I've been in his physical space. Here's the key. <laughs> this is almost too much to believe, but he was, I didn't know this part of the story, but he was at the Oklahoma rally, the first anti-face mask rally that happened. I guess like joy of, joyfully celebrating the lack of a mask. Now he's dead, okay, from COVID-19. Now, what you are hearing in the news now is that while he was in the hospital dying of COVID-19 from not wearing his mask to a Trump rally that should have never happened in Oklahoma without masks, being jubilant about being rebellious and ignoring the science, and now he's no longer with us. While he's dying in the hospital, his social media lackeys are still putting out anti <laughs> mask stuff, knowing the man is dying in the hospital of COVID-19. This story is going to bite hard, bite really hard, because this is an absolute front row, in your face demonstration of how absolutely insane that idea is of not wearing a mask, okay? So do with it what you wish. My job is simply to put it out there. You can dismiss it or whatever or go back in your hole, stick your head back in the ground. That's your problem. Mask it or casket. GDP is down 33%. I'm laying that directly on Trump's head because we are the only country in the world reporting that GDP drop. We are a pariah. We can't travel. 
can't go to Canada, they can't come here, can't go to Europe, they can't come here. We are a pariah and our economy has absolutely been obliterated by mishandling this from the start. I will not back off this position no matter what because I've seen the data, it's clear, the cover-ups, that stuff's not going to work. It never works. It's all going to come out. It's already coming out. It's going to continue to come out. Nobody is reporting this drop uh, but us at this point, making a big deal out of it like they should be. I mean, uh, a third of our, we, we've never had a third of our economy lost, uh, in a, never. And then never in recorded history has that happened in a quarter. I said it would be a third to a half, it's a third. So nice job, President, asshat, okay? And on not renewing the unemployment insurance, that's also really pathetic. You guys have printed out of thin air hundreds of billions of dollars and given it to your stock market buddies, pumping the numbers up to try to make people think everything is okay when it's just funny money, mis it's, it's just printed out of thin air. But you're going to debate and actually let it expire. Okay, so now it's expired. You're going to let the common people fight for the scraps. While 90-something percent of you still claim to be Christians and you still claim to be that, I really wouldn't play that card. I really wouldn't, okay? You can dismiss me if you like, but it's not going to be me on Judgment Day that hears these words. Be gone. I don't know you. An awful lot of you are going to hear that. Count on it. And if you don't renew the, the, the unemployment insurance and you don't do it in the next couple of days, you're going to see exactly how bad the chaos will get. We're getting a consistent 100,000 per day. I already said that. Uh, more bullshit from the red rodents about war trade. War trade was paid for by me. Okay. I paid for the servers. I paid for the software development. I paid for all of it. It took him, and it took. It costs a lot more than ten thousand dollars. I don't remember now. I closer to a hundred thousand if I go through the records. I bore. I bore the cost of that to test the idea, of basically to build the trading engine, uh, which we did. Uh, it was to simulate the trading of fictional companies. We had a random news generator. It was basically a, a beta for the what became ASM. We didn't know that at the time. It was just um, kind of learned from Gary Halbert because his. His stock trading educational system was based on trading the news, which, by the way, is the only thing you can really count on. It was really smart. We got a lot of, lot of, lot of compliments on the system. It was how to get the news quickly and how to interpret it the way the public would interpret it in order to make buying and selling decisions. Basically, to know how the public is going to react to a given news story, whether they're going to think it's good or bad, and then how to access news information faster than other people make a quick assessment and make the trade so that you can get ahead of the news cycle. This was before social media and all that. I don't know that it would work now. But back then, you know, if you got the news faster than other people and could interpret the news faster than other people, then you could trade profitably pretty damn consistently. I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was a smart thing because he did copywriting his whole life, so he knew psychology and what people would buy and not buy. So that led into uh, a thought process that became... Uh, well, could we create a stock market kind of to simulate that, right? To simulate what it would be like to trade on news. So the public never really bought it because they didn't believe the news generator would generate the news fairly. Okay, I, I get that. And we had a very slow number of people who actually put real money in and took money out. It was a net loser. But the few that were left, uh, their accounts were transferred one to one. It was, if I remember right, it was like maybe 10 accounts. It was very, very few accounts. Um, into ASM. And then that project worked, the idea of sports teams and sports team news because it's, a, it's independently observable in the world and it's not under your control, then that became ASM. So that's, that's the war trade story. It's, it's, it's not a, uh, there's no caper here. So fuck off, that's bullshit. Uh, bets are not investments and investments are not bets and i am seeing more of this garbage every single day this is some kind of trumpian freaking gaslighting bullshit that's being tried to and and alper has been keen to this for a long time they're trying to get people to think by interchanging this language on the financial market side and on the on the gambling side that there's no difference 
bullshit. Okay? That's what that is. That is pure, greedy, manipulative, deceptive bullshit. Okay? And we're going to be putting more and more meat on the bone to make sure the public understands the difference. And you fuckers don't get away with this crap. Reddit Rodents. That's your new name. The Reddit Rodents, everyone. Welcome. I know you read everything I write. And I know that you watch every video that I put up, no matter what you actually say. Okay? So let me tell you what you're actually doing for us that's helpful. You're acting as an unpaid self uppel research team. So that's actually what companies and politicians pay money for. So keep digging and keep putting it out there so I can keep kicking it down because what you're doing is preparing us for the big time because I'm sure when DraftKings finally realizes we're coming for their throat, they're going to do the same thing. So you're saving us money doing self-investigation so we can plug all the holes. And by publishing the lies. Now, you can publish the things that are not true all day long. I mean, I'm sorry, publish the things that are true all day long. And you can say, I think. That means it's an opinion or some word like that. But when you make a declaratory statement, you make a declaratory statement that something is false or is a lie or you call somebody a liar and you are the liar, you are no longer protected. Not in California. You are now, you are now defaming and defaming is actionable. So you're doing two things. You're helping us plug the holes for the big time. So thanks for that. And you're giving us a catalog of data so we can sue you later anytime we want because we scrape that site and scrape it and scrape it and scrape it and keep copies of it. And since I know who the ringleaders are, and some of you have actually shown up in our events, acting like you were our friends to turn around and stab us in the back, I've got all that footage, okay? So I'm really not sure what your angle is here, what, what you're trying to accomplish. You're in the wrong. You're stating things that are false as though they're true. You don't take them down. I told you to take them down. You agreed to take them down and stop putting them up in writing. And you sent copies live, carbon copies, reply all to other people who got the same message saying that you would stop. All I have to do to win at court is file that and you're done, okay? Because the things you're saying are true or not. You can't do that. That's defaming. That's not allowed, okay? And it's actionable for damages in California. So go ahead and keep it going, okay? I'm going to, at some point, if you do not remove the lies, I have warned you over and over and over again, and you even agreed to stop. If you don't, you and your compadres will be sued for $100 million. I'm not kidding. You had better take me seriously. If that's what it takes, to stop you from harming our stakeholders. I don't care what you, you're not going to do anything whatsoever to me. Forget it. You will never get to me. But if you harm them, and I'm about to the point where I believe that's what's happening from this, then it just takes a day and about $5 out of my pocket to change your life forever. Okay, so keep it up. There will be a point when I have had it totally, and you're going to see just how capable we are in the courts. Jeff Hazlett said, you can be an asset if you want to be, or a saint if you want to be, decide. Okay, this, was a, this is a constant theme. I did. I decided in the year 1999 that gambling is a corrupt scam operated by scumbags, okay? That's why ASM was built. That's the origin story. There will never, 
ever, ever be a deal between us and them in any fashion. Okay? This project is a mirror opposite to them. Okay? Good and evil, light and darkness. That's what we have. There's going to be no deal. It will succeed along the track that we've laid down from the beginning, which is now 20 years from concept. Not from beginning execution. You guys keep throwing that. That's not the actual start. The actual start was August of 2014 for, for the first time. Okay? This is August of 2020. Five years of operation, five years of mothball, and we're back to five years here. That's the truth. Okay? That's the truth. Prior to that, it was being conceived and tested in the war trade and all the rest of that stuff. I decided that I was going to take gambling down with this project, project, okay? That's in the DNA. That's not going anywhere. So you only have two choices, not three, not five, not seven, two. Get on or get the fuck off. Nobody is changing the direction. The controls are going to go from me to Alper or who he designates or from me to the wastebasket. And that's it. Okay? So make peace with that. Help advance that if you are a stakeholder. Or I'm going to remove you from the equation. Okay? I've done it already. The history of this country, uh, sorry, of this company shows that. And I will do it until every person and element is removed that doesn't understand this is the law. We are an investment prospect project for sports. That's what we're about, investing in sports, not gambling. Those statements, those words do not match. Investments and bets are not the same thing. And that is not going to change. We are going to survive and we're going to succeed on this track Alper is going to take over or he's going to assign someone to take over in his place until he can or we're going to fail. But we are not going to make a deal to survive with any, anyone that is connected to the gambling business ever. I have absolute control over this. I can mandate this. Nobody can change it. Nobody can overrule me. This is the law. We go from here to Alper. Alper is more anti-gambling than I am, believe it or not. More anti-gambling. So that's off the table. So if that's the way you want to go with the with the gambling losers, because they're the they're losing, and I'm gonna get to that in a second. They're losing hand over fist right now. Okay? You want to go with the losers? Help yourself. But you will not change the direction of this entity one micrometer okay get in get out that's the only choice you have sec counterclaims research ongoing if they take this dog shit case to trial we will counter sue them okay I'm stating that publicly right now, August 2nd, 2020. If they don't settle this case like they should, fairly, very, very fairly, then there will be a trial, okay? And in that trial, they're going to answer the counterclaims. And I have a few that are going to be real problematic for them. MGM lost a billion in, in the second quarter. That's 10 million dollars a day. Let's see how long they can lose 10 million dollars a day. It's not going to be as long as you think. Walmart cuts, just like McDonald's, never seen, never seen. ASM lives, gambling dies. I keep saying it over and over and over. All sports market and sports investing lives. Gambling, DFS, and all that trash into the crypt. Four straight months of positive cash flow. For us, four straight months to the end of July. Nobody in the gambling business can say that. Nobody. Show me. Show me one. 
Show me one. This is a war of attrition. I said that from the beginning. This is a war of attrition. By the way, that's the first straight month, for first time in more than a year, for, for four straight months, uh, closer to two years. Um, this is a war of attrition. And at $10 million a day, they're losing. MGM's losing $10 million a day. How long can you lose that? I, I, we're positive cash flow right now. So how long are you guys going to lose $10 million a day? And DraftKings, <laughs> I can hardly wait for the cooked books. If they don't cook the books, it's going to be really ugly. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, Macau. Okay, so Macau is a leading indicator because they cleaned up the mess from coronavirus, unlike us, much earlier. They've been open for a while. This is gambling. This is really the number two place in the world. Okay, number two. The foot traffic. Now, let's not play these stupid number games. Okay, not net income, not gross income. The foot traffic. That's people walking down 94% still last month. <laughs> So 94% foot traffic down, it, that, come on. That's, I mean, frankly, I'm shocked that it's, I would, I mean, 75%, maybe 50% would, I think it's closer to what I would have expected the number to be. 94% indicates to me that people are prioritizing their expenses and they go, I'm not gonna piss my money away on that stupid shit or they don't have it. <laughs> And all you're left with are the addicts and the, uh, you know, the people that don't know any better. So that's, they're not going to build a business on that. Um, all right. So this is just, I want to put this out there because uh, I want it to be on the public record forever. So every single day of my life for the last 15 years, okay, I can say that for sure. Prior to that, I don't, I can't track it as clearly. But for the last 15 years, okay, 15 years, every single day of my life, weekends, holidays included, I have been working on ASM in some fashion. Um, I, don't, I don't do anything else. I'm either researching or directly producing something or traveling or I have always been working on this every day. There are no hobbies. I don't golf. I don't waste time with that nonsense. I only do this and, and ride my bike and, and go get supplies. And even on my bike, I'm listening to things to, that I think will help improve my knowledge or somehow help me uh, solve a problem we have, okay? I have attempted to communicate as clearly everything that has ever happened to us along the way, uh, what I thought was going to happen, good or bad. I've reported the good and the bad. Uh, with equal priority, if I have bad news, I don't keep it in my pocket. Um, there have been claims that I hid the SEC thing. It's a flat lie, okay? They told me specifically, do not say anything. I was under a gag. I don't know if it was legal or not, but I'll swear in front of any court or God himself, they told me to my face and via phone and other things uh, multiple times, to not mention any part of this. So what the, the, the moment that I knew there was a lawsuit is the same moment that basically everybody knew was there. I mean, I didn't know before then, and I was told not to. So I had no way of knowing what was going to happen next to even tell anybody. I couldn't tell them what was going to happen, and, and I did not know what was going to happen. So that has always been the case, okay? I have never held back information of any sort, good, bad, or otherwise. It all goes out with equal priority, okay? you can take every, you want to go through probably 40 gigabytes of data that I have on everything, and you're not going to find any variation of that. So I, I don't care about people rummaging through my files because I know I've done the absolute best that I could at every step for 15 straight years, okay? Where do you see, I mean, look, the reality is this is a very, very difficult thing to do, uh, to, to come up with, to, con to conceive. When I first explained it to Nick, uh, who's the holder of that loan that you guys love to talk about, he laughed because I, he laughed, and he would tell you this, he laughed because I said I'd have it done pretty quick, you know, 
he, he knew the complexity and difficulty of what I was trying to accomplish. And this was before he funded us to help us get it going. So yes, it's tough. And, and where do you see any working models? There are none. The only one trading out there is us, and that's on bonus margin. <laughs> so can you imagine what's going to happen when it's one-to-one -one with real cash? Nobody's been able to pull this off, and it's been tried a whole bunch of times, including people apparently threatening to try in, which you fucking better not, because the package we have now is much stronger than it was back in 2005, 2006. So I'll fucking rip your fucking head off if you try to steal this from the people who paid and sacrificed for it. Don't you fucking dare do that, okay? This has been very hard to accomplish, and I'm not tolerating any more thieves, okay? That shit's going to stop. The only model that works in the known universe and has ever been proven to work in 20 fucking years is this one, okay? A hundred to two hundred million dollars was spent trying to steal it and they failed, okay? And it will happen again and they will fail. But don't you dare copy one tiny aspect of this because I'm coming for you and you will be shut the fuck down. And you will owe us for every dime that you took in times three because that's the damages. Ours works. And it will work fabulously when we show the world once what it will do. The game schedules are now up to date by the day. I'm not going to load them up any further than day by day. I have zero confidence that these schedules will be maintained. And if they're not maintained, the, the chaos that will result from the dividends will be just a nightmare. So I'm literally hand managing this right now to make sure that all the game opens are happening. Right now, all we're doing is loading up the game opens because it's a, the system is not simple, okay? Because we have redundancies and things that are backed up and the transaction tracking and all this. Ace built bank level systems when he was a Microsoft partner. So it has the same stuff. So this is not just flip one thing. You know, we have to uh, build a test bed, test it, test it, then he gives it to me and I test it and we make sure it works. So what we have now is we have the loading system ready. Uh, actually, it's working. So everything is up to date, and it will continue to be up to date day by day. I'm only going to go one day at a time. So, you know, today is up to date. Tomorrow will be up to date. Monday will be up to date, et cetera. And then what you're going to see on the back end is the goal, uh, the 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 catch-ups, okay? So it will be baseball, which started on, uh, what, Thursday the 25th or whatever that was. So you'll start to see those dividends paying and then the time will shorten between the schedules and the closings until it's almost simultaneously. And then, you know, to get simultaneous closing, we need to find another data provider because it's really hard to get uh, right on the bell. Because uh, to make the system work perfectly, we needed to get it right on the bell. But there have been losses of data services and providers, and we haven't been able to get any communication back from the one we did use before the shutdown. So we're going to have to find a data provider. Now, I know with all the gambling garbage, there's going to be a lot more selections. We'll be able to get uh, higher quality data. And, and because for ASM to work, again, to, for it to work perfectly, the, literally, as soon as the final score is official, the second that that happens, it should close the contracts. And uh, that's going to be a, a data research project. So in the meantime, it, we'll just manage it manually um, until we figure that out. But just be patient because the 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 lot the there's a leading edge and a trailing edge and then it'll close and close and close and close and then once we get a new data provider it'll be it will we'll test it and then sync it up make sure it works and then it'll be back to autopilot again. Uh, Goldman Sachs and Bank Cap. So this is really bizarre. This happened today. Okay, this happened today. Okay, so on my on my life. Today, I got uh, LinkedIn invites too, and that's unusual on a Sunday morning too. Sunday. LinkedIn typically doesn't track 24-7 uh, like Facebook. I don't use Facebook. It's a waste of life. I haven't had a Facebook account in six years, I think. Uh, it's maybe seven years. Um, but LinkedIn's valuable. LinkedIn doesn't tend to have as much activity on the weekends. People seem to se separate their, their work lives not as much as they used to now, for sure. But they used to, you know, they separate a bit, right? So the weekend traffic tends to, to do this. So you don't get a lot of stuff on the weekend. You get a big rush on Monday morning when everybody is, quote, back at work, right? I don't know what back at work is. I work, I sleep, I work, I sleep. That's it. So um, th so I, I don't get 
I don't get a lot of stuff on the weekends. This morning, I got um, invitation requests that were noteworthy, two of them that came in almost back to back. One was from a gentleman who will remain unnamed. He was a very high-level M&A person at Goldman Sachs. I want to say that I've never had anybody from Goldman Sachs at any level uh, connect to me, reach out to me for a connection. So there's something to this. And then somebody who recently left Bain Capital. Bain Capital is Mitt Romney, okay, um, who left Bain Capital but was with him for a while, just back to back. So I, these guys probably know each other. So somebody's sniffing around. Now, this is not to get, you know, don't start getting crazy again. But, um, yes, we are, we're um, – Alper's looking very, at the SPAC thing. Uh, I've turned that over to him. I'm not going to make any more announcements to set expectations on any of that stuff because I left that to him. When he's ready to make that announcement and we work through it on the inside, then I will um, – I'll give a public, you know, a statement to our, our shareholders and stuff as to what, what we really think is happening and what we can do with that, what we can do with the SPAC, okay, for ASM. But just understand that I, I, I reported this team to, to the team this morning. It's not normal for me to get a Goldman Sachs and Bank Capital invite on a Sunday morning. That's somebody sniffing around. So uh, there's that. Uh, finally, kind of an interesting story. This is also from this morning. Uh, I got this sent to me from a few friends. Who, who know about Ace's movie. But Ace has been working from about summer of 2018 uh, on a movie uh, with James Hong, who is the most, act, most acting credits of anybody in history. I think, I think he's been the first one uh, in, li in, in living actors. Um, but I think he's now reaching the all-time, uh, most actors of all time. And I, I've met him a couple times. I mean, he's, he's always over at the studio. Not always. I mean, he's over there when he needs to be to finish up the film that Ace has been working on with Zach since the summer of 2018, uh, the Patsy Lee movie. So he was the number one uh, story on CNN, which, which got picked up by Apple and showed as the number one trending story in, uh, in Apple News, which is, you know, so number one actor of all time, I think, is, is, is I, they're not sure of that claim. <laughs> it seems they think it might be true. Um, and so that was the number one trending story is that James Hong is like the most, the maxi actor, you know, most actor of all time. And I met the gentleman twice. I met him when they first started the film. And I was over there when they were doing some, uh, some, some studio work before the shutdown. So my point is, is that um, anything that Ace, you know, I wish them the best. And this is really, I think Ace is really trying to make his breakout picture with this. Uh, and I wish him the absolute best on it because they have been, they've been through holy hell with this thing. But, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, if crossing fingers, right, hopefully this goes well and they can release this picture uh, soon. I don't know where they are in post-production, but anything that uh, raises up, you know, if that picture does well, because James is in the picture, it's going to accrue to Ace, and whatever accrues to Ace accrues to ASM. So I, I'm not saying that all those things will happen. I'm just saying that's the media game. I mean, we've been doing this for a long time. That's how it works. So just to let you know, that's that's kind of an interesting tidbit. So in closing, um, you know, the, the virus isn't looking good. I'm not a health expert, so, you know, I'm not going to go on that, that, talk about that much more than that. But um, you know, we got some difficult times ahead, folks. And, you know, just as a person to person, um, you know, I made this comment to my team the other day that we we need to really look at this. There was a game in, in Louisiana when I grew up, where I grew up, um, called Cooties. <laughs> it was a game that, you know, you, if you got touched, you were dead. You know, all it takes to get killed in this game is, is you get touched and you got the Cooties and you're dead. That's really how you should look at coronavirus. Um, you know, it's not even touched that it's aerosol. It's worse than that. Okay. Aerosol, like a spray, it lives in the air, floats in the air. It doesn't have to be uh, on a surface to touch it. So you don't actually have to touch anything to get it. You can catch it from the air. So it's dangerous. It's a very dangerous bug. If I didn't make the point to you that I met a gentleman one year ago who was the picture of a big, tough, strapping, you know, big, powerful dude, right? And he's no longer with us. Uh, one year, I think almost exactly. I think this thing was a, like uh, August of last year. So that's a warning. You're, you're free to take it or leave it. Uh, thank you for your time very much. Um, uh, I do know that everybody's trying to make their way through everything and have to budget their time. And I try to pack this with 
things that I think they'll help you overall, not just, uh, you know, our, our talk in our book, right? Which is what everybody has to do to eat in some fashion, I guess. So thank you very much. Um, have a, a wonderful rest of your weekend and uh, stay safe out there. Bye now.